Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything you read about or heard about or anything you've heard on this radio program, 844-236-6010 is our number. Same if you have questions or comments about our Truth Skin Health products or our bone broth protein or any of the longevity products, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase our bone broth protein, please head over to brightsidehealth.com brightsidehealth.com got two flavors of, of our bone broth protein up we've also got uh, burger max product and, and i soon to ha- hopefully soon anyway i'll have some cbd oil some high-end organic cbd oil we haven't talked about cbd too much on this program but we will be in the future cbd is anti-pain anti-cancer it's a derivative of the marijuana plant and uh, it's actually legal stuff you can't get high from it but It's got some really interesting anti-pain benefits as well as anti-cancer benefits. I've got a nice CBD tincture we'll be having. We'll be selling up at brightsidehealth.com, hopefully soon. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, make some money, and get your products at the wholesale price as well. And, of course, if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with acne, blemishes, hyperpigmentation, dark spots, or if you just want an overall anti-aging product, you're not going to find 5% retinol anywhere, folks, especially not with 25% vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrance, no silicon, no oil, no water, no filler, no wax, no emulsifier, no surfactant, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, just active and functional ingredients because that's all you should pay for when you purchase a skin health product truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay welcome back to the bright side continuing on with our eat fat get skinny diet i love that idea eat fat get thin also known as the ketogenic diet, the high-performance diet, the heart health diet, the brain health diet, the anti-diabetic diet, the anti-cancer diet. What more do you want from a, from a diet, from a way of eating? You get everything there, everything. The three leading causes of death in this country, diabetes, cancer, and heart disease, all related to obesity, and the ketogenic diet addresses all of that. And it's a high-performance, athlete-friendly diet as well. There's so many reasons why fat is important, not just as a source of energy, but also for its biochemistry. Fat is an important biochemical. It's a a substance that participates in biochemical reactions that are associated with anti-aging, anti-cancer, anti-disease, and good health. This is so important because those of us who were brought up in the 50s and 60s and 70s, are, it was pounded into our brains that there was something wrong with fat. 
And to this day, the vestiges of this low-fat stupidity remain with us in products like low-fat brownies and half-and-half and half cream or, or milk, milk whatever, milk uh, additive. I don't know what you call half-and-half, half, some kind of processed milk frankenfood thing. But we still have this idea in our culture that we have to reduce our, the amount of fat that we eat. And present company excluded, if you're listening to this program, you're on the cutting edge of nutrition. If you en enjoy what we're talking about, you're on the cutting edge of intelligence, really, because what we talk about on this program is not for the mainstream. It flies in the face of the mainstream. But for, the mo uh, for, for most folks out there, they're still thinking that there's something wrong with fat, and they've got to avoid fat. And from a biochemical perspective, this is, uh, it, it's, bad, it's a bad idea. It's a bad health strategy to avoid fat. The fact that there's a biochemistry associated with fat, really associated with all of the macronutrients, with fats, with sugar, with protein, and with fiber, and perhaps even with water, the fact that there is a biochemistry associated with these substances is why the medical and dietitian's idea of weight loss as a function of calories in and calories out, that is the idea that if you want to lose weight, all you got to do is eat less, is wrong. And it's bad science. And I still hear dietitians and medical people say, oh, it's just, a, just calories in, calories out. Reduce your calories. That's all you got to do. Being overweight is just a matter of too much calories. No. It's a, 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 it ha involves too much calories, of course. But it also involves biochemistry, biochemical reactions. And your doctor's not a biochemist. And that's a very important point. Your dietitian's not a biochemist either. They're just reading things that, they, uh, that the, the drug companies told them about. They're following old shibboleths, old, old ideas, antiquated ideas. And they're working with symptoms. They're clinicians. To be a clinician is different from being a chemist or a biochemist. A clinician is somebody who works in the clinic. In the clinic is where you go when you're sick. The clinicians study symptoms. That's why you are, a, if you go to a clinician, i.e. a doctor, for your health, you're not going to be able to get much done. And that's why the medical model has failed us. And that's why people rip on the medical model. It's really not fair to rip on the medical model. It's not fair to rip on doctors. Because we're expecting to get blood from a turnip. We're expecting to get oranges from an apple tree. That's, all, that's on us. If we go to a clinician to actually get help for our bodies, that's on us. That's not on the clinician. The clinician studies clinical stuff. Clinical stuff is symptoms. Clinical chemistry is about lab tests, for example. So if you go to a clinician, they're going to read your lab tests. They're not going to, they don't give a crap about you. They give a crap about your numbers and your statistics and your lab tests and your lab values. And they're going to dose your lab values. They're going to treat your lab values. And then they're going to see if you're better by how they affected your lab values. Not, never mind your health, it's your lab values. And that's why some of the biggest companies in the world, on the planet, and some of the most profit-intensive companies are lab companies, because everybody's obsessed with their tests. I think tests are silly. And I've said that for years. You want to go by how you feel. That's how you, you go by alleviation of your symptomology. Do your symptoms improve? Do you improve? Not do they improve artificially. But do they really improve? Not do they get masked or hidden like via drugs, but do they really change? Does your blood pressure really drop? Not does it get compelled to drop with a pharmaceutical, but is it naturally low? Back in the pre-biochemistry days when the body was thought of as a steam engine in the 19th century when chemistry got going, chemistry was just getting going in the middle of the 19th century, the prevailing model of the body was that it was like a steam engine. That was the highest tech of the, of the uh, 19th century, so the 1800s was the steam engine. So the body was like a steam engine. The notion was that food is calories, food is energy, and the less you eat, the less energy you put into the body, the skinnier you'll be. And the more you eat, the fatter you'll be. Now there's some truth to this idea, obviously, but the fact is the body's not a mere steam engine. It is a highly sophisticated biochemical system that responds quite differently to even slightly different molecules. And this is why fats are so darn important. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are 
we're back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much for joining us on the bright side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24 7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Packed with information as this program is. This is an information intensive program for smart people. If you're listening to this program, if you enjoy the bright side, you are one of the smart people, and that's who I talk to. And that's who I love talking to. I don't want to dumb things down for you guys. It's not fair to dumb things down. That's why I always explain how this stuff works rather than, rather than just telling you what to take. There's a lot of programs where they tell you what to take or they'll give you the, the conventional wisdom. This is not a conventional wisdom program. You're not going to hear this stuff on any other radio program, that's for sure, because it's coming out of my head and out of my experience and out of my personal research. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you've got questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, or bone broth protein, which you can find out all about at brightsidehealth.com. I love this stuff, man. It is so tasty. And you know what? If you've had a problem with whey protein, which I also love, but I, I love whey protein. The fact that I'm, uh, I've got the bone broth protein up at brightsidehealth.com does not mean that I'm, I'm not a big fan of whey protein. And there's wonderful things in whey protein that you can't get anywhere else. But some people can't do uh, whey protein, number one. Some people get bloated or, or digestive discomfort. It is a dairy product. Some people get tired. I get tired after, if I do too much whey protein. And it doesn't have the same kind of uh, amino acid balance that the bone broth protein has, as we've said s uh, several times, as we talked with Jordan and we've been talking about. There's a difference between the kind of proteins or the kind of amino acids that you get from dairy and the kind of amino acids that you get from meat or flesh and uh, uh, the kind of pro amino acids that you get from bones and cartilage. Bones and cartilage, cartilage protein is important for building bones and cartilage, i.e. connective tissue. Bone broth protein is a connective tissue protein and because aging is really, or the visible signs of aging, I should say, are really the manifestation of a breakdown in connective tissue. Using connective tissue building protein has some tremendous effects for the visible part of aging, wrinkles, uh, uh, weakness in the, in the sp uh, bones and the, in the spine, scoliosis, the kind of hunching over effect, the shriveling up effect that occurs as we age is a connective tissue problem. It's the manifestation of a breakdown in connective tissue. And using amino acids for building connective tissue is incredibly anti-aging from a visible anti-aging standpoint, especially for the skin. That's why you'll find connective tissue building substances in bone broth protein, that is hyaluronic acid and glucosamine and chondroitin. These are ordinarily found in cartilage containing products and you gotta eat a lot of cartilage to get hyaluronic acid and chondroitin and glucosamine and collagen. But you can get all that in our bone broth protein. You can find out all about it at brightsidehealth.com. And of course, if you wanna purchase some of the finest, the finest skin health products you'll ever use, go to truth, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Make sure you look at our retinol 5% gel as well as our truth serum, truth balm, and truth omega-6 healing cream. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We're talking about the ketogenic diet. Got so much to say about this, I, I probably won't exhaust everything that's fascinating about the ketogenic diet, but in the next couple days we'll talk about how you can leverage it from a practical standpoint, what kind of foods you can use, how to go into it so you don't have to deal, or you can minimize the effects anyway of the keto flu, which is some of the fatigue and and unpleasantries that occur as we shift over, over from sugar burning into fat burning. And that's really what this is all about, is helping the body become a fat burner versus a sugar burner. Back in the days when biochemistry was first starting to be discovered, we really didn't understand that there was a distinction between how the body processed fat and how the body processed sugar. We thought the body was like a steam engine, calories in, calories out. If anybody says to you, calories in, calories out, well, they're operating on 1870 biochemistry or 1870 chemical, chemistry information. Calories in, calories out is good for a steam engine, but it's not good for a body. Body is a highly sophisticated biochemical system that responds quite differently to even slightly different molecules. And from a chemistry perspective, a fat is a different molecule than a sugar. And it's way more different than a protein. Sugars and protein are also different and they all elicit different biochemical responses from each other. This is why you can manifest a completely different biochemical health spectrum 
and completely different weight loss results by your choice of the type of calorie. It's not calories in, calories out only, although partially it is. It also involves the type of calorie. For one thing, sugars will jack up your insulin and fats don't. And many, if not most of the degenerative diseases we're dealing with are a function of problems with insulin. Sugars jack up your insulin, fat doesn't. That's a huge difference. Protein calories have an effect on satisfaction. They're satiety inducing. They induce satisfaction. They have appetite suppressant effects in the brain. You have an appetite shut off system in the brain that shuts off the appetite. This is why nobody binges on, on, on T-bone steaks or on, or on protein powders. You can't binge on a protein powder. You are going to get really, really full on our bone broth protein. Protein is incredible weight loss food, but you got to be careful even there. Because while protein is satisfying, protein can get turned into sugar. If you're not using your protein, if you're just ingesting lots of protein, but you're not working out or you're not recovering from surgery, or you're not somehow or another utilizing that protein, guess what's going to happen? It's going to turn to sugar, and then it's going to turn to fat, and you're going to gain weight, and you're going to go, but I'm eating paleo. I cut out the gluten. doesn't matter. Protein can get turned into fat. It can get turned into sugar. It can raise your blood sugar. Yeah, if you're diabetic and you go high protein, but you're not utilizing that protein, that protein is going to get turned into sugar. Your blood sugar is going to go up, and you're going to get, what? And you're going to get fat. And this is one of the problems with people who try to go paleo as a weight loss strategy. On the other hand, the ketogenic diet, which is a high fat diet, activates a completely different biochemistry than sugar and a completely different biochemistry than protein, especially when it's turned into sugar. The chemistry of fat burning produces high energy compounds called ketones, and that's what this is all about, folks. It's about the ketone. Ketones are in incredible from a biochemistry standpoint, and in the 1800s, we didn't know about ketones. Didn't really understand the power of ketones till the early 20th century when they started to examine why fasting was so important. The ketogenic diet is a fasting diet in the sense that it duplicates the chemistry of fasting. This is why fasting is so important, because it generates similar chemistry to ketones. It generates ketones. It makes you a fat burner. So when they started to do research, this was uh, medical research on why fasting was important for health, specifically on why fasting was anti-seizure. It all started with seizures. At the turn of the 20th century, they became obsessed with seizure disorders. That was one of the, it was a big problem. People had seizure disorders. There were no, imagine there were no anticonvulsant drugs back then. Anticonvulsant drugs, anti-seizure drugs, didn't come out until the 1930s. So at the beginning of the 20th century, when you had a seizure, there's nothing they could do about it. So they were, really, they were really focusing a lot of research and a lot of scientific attention on seizures. And they knew that fasting could mitigate or eliminate seizure disorders. Just think about that for a minute. How does fasting work to eliminate seizure disorders? Well, it calms the body down. That's what we talk about on this, on this program so many times, so often. If you had to sum up everything we talk about on this program, you wouldn't be far off if you said calm the body down. Nutrition calms the body down. Caloric restriction calms the body down. Oxygen calms the body down. Why? Because when the body's calm, it heals. It anti-ages. We feel better. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back with more good health information right after this on the, on the Bright Side. Don't go away. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, the ketogenic diet or bone broth protein, the longevity products or skin health questions, or if you just want to comment or if you have a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And we do have lines open for you. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday with good original health information from 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time on the Genesis Communication Network. We're talking ketogenic diet and CLA from uh, the journal Biochemica, 2005, October. Dietary coconut oil increases conjugated linoleic acid, that is CLA, induced fat loss. That means when you combine your coconut oil with CLA, that will improve your body's ability to drop the pounds, independent of EFA, independent of EFAs, essential fatty acids. 
I mean, it has nothing to do with the EFAs, this, in this study anyway. It's the MCTs. The MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, are the active ingredient, or one of the active ingredient, or the most important active ingredient in coconut oil, and so I love the stuff. Yes, it's an oil. Yes, it's a vegetable oil. But you aren't going to get you're, you're not going to get MCTs from very many places. Coconut oil and palm oil, pretty much it. You can get straight MCTs. You can go to the uh, health food store and get MCTs. But guess what that is? Coconut oil. Yes. Look up. Read the ingredients. Chem MCTs for the most part are going to be coconut oil, and if you're staying away from coconut oil, you're going to lose the benefit of this stuff, and it's amazing for weight loss and for energy. MCTs are utilized by the body in a completely different way than ordinary fats, or than ordinary, uh, I should say, that, well, than ordinary fats, yes. MCTs go right to work, boom. They don't, get, they don't have to get processed. They go right to work. That's what makes them a bodybuilder's favorite source of energy, and they'll help you lose weight, too. And if you take them with CLA, whether you're getting your CLA in a supplement or whether you're getting your CLA in dairy products, that can also help you lose weight. This one's from the journal Diabetes. Di dietary uh, May 1992. Dietary substitution of medium-chain triglycerides improves insulin metabolism. That's right. Coconut oil for diabetes. Coconut oil will improve your insulin metabolism, even if you don't have diabetes. If, even if you're just getting older. Even if you just want to mitigate some of the, the signs of aging. Yeah, if you have any of the issues associated with metabolic syndrome, including high blood pressure. Coconut oil for high blood pressure. Coconut oil for Alzheimer's disease. Coconut oil for liver health. From the American Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and Other Dementias. Role of MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, in the treatment of mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. MCTs are turned into ketones. And ketones are amazing for brain health. There is so much stuff here. There is so much literature here about fats and ketones and MCTs. It just blows me away why we don't hear about this from, our, from the mainstream any more than we do. Although, I have to say the situation is changing. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Got lines open for you. Let's go to Kentucky and talk to Bo. What's up, Bo? Hey, Ben. I really enjoy uh, listening to your show. About Thank you. About 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, sleep apnea. Okay. And I, the first doctor I went to said I wanted to re my tonsils were removed when I was a kid. Wanted to remove my adenoids and shave my nose fins. And, so, and what was the last thing you said? Shave my nose fins, like shave parts of my nose to allow air to go through. Oh, like your septum? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So got it. Uh, you know, I was dating at the time. Said her mom was a nurse and said that that doctor was a quack and pretty much. So I went to another doctor. <laughs> And he examined me, and he found some skin tags on my body. And he said, you know what, when you scar, it's totally the wrong thing to do. He goes, you want my medical honest opinion? Yeah. He goes, you're fat. Yeah, okay. It hurt. <laughs> it hurt. Okay, got you, Bo. Hey, can yeah, I, I yeah, want to hear what you're saying. This out. Bo, 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 Bo. Hey, Bo. Bo, hang yeah. on. I want to hear everything you're saying. It sounds fascinating. But I need you to either speak up or get me on speaker. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. You there? So, yeah, yeah. So you said. So you said he told you you're fat. By the way, skin tags are a classic sign of prediabetes or diabetes. So your doc oh, yeah, was right yeah, on on that one. Yeah, yeah. I was a vegetarian at the time, eating a lot of carbs. So okay. I switched to a uh, high fat diet. Okay. And uh, a ketogenic diet, I guess what you call it now, is the uh, it was the Atkins diet diet. And I found okay. a martial art called the Russian Systema. What is it called? Systema. Systema. It's the system. It's all about. Um, it's a Christian martial art. It's about two thousand years old. Well, hang on now. Don't. That's too juicy to bypass. There, a Christian martial art. Yeah, it's from Russia. It's about breathing, relaxing, and moving, and I that love the body it. can heal. Um, oh my God, I love it. I love it. It's called fasting, Systema. It, Systema. It has fasting. They do dousing, where we pour cold water on ourselves and breathe and relax. And oh my gosh, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I gotta look that up. Well, yeah, it really, it, when you speak, I hear a lot of the things you say, like burst breathing, 
um, getting the lymphatic system to move. Nice. These are all things that I kind of learned over the years through it, and I just wanted to know if you ever heard of it. I never heard of it, but everything you're talking about is 100% right on so far. I mean, I, you know, here's the thing, Tom, uh, uh, Bo. Once you get it, you get it, and then all the pieces just fall into place. And I'm not the only one who gets it. I mean, this is, I didn't invent this stuff. This is just kind of biochemical logic, and once you start to understand certain basics, how the body processes energy, what calories are, and how important the relaxation response is, how important oxygenation is. Once you understand these basics, everything just kind of fits together and a whole picture is formed and you can kind of predict what sort of benefits you're going to have from what sort of uh, action steps that you take. You get a whole picture. And so uh, when I hear uh, what you call systema and, and the, what they talk about, burst breathing and relaxing the body and cold water and fasting and movement, it makes perfect sense. They might as well call Call it uh, the bright side philosophy, or I might as well call this fear, the systema philosophy. They, you know, fear is a killer. They say you all that. Really, when a tiger, awesome. In the old days when we were cavemen, a tiger would come after you. You'd run up a tree and you'd see the tension, the fear walk away when the tiger left. That's exactly so right. And bills, it always amps up, and you never can turn down. Exactly. The, the, we the, never the turn it down. You, you know what the difference between us and the tiger is, or us and the animals, or, or us and our primitive ancestors, is we have imagination. <laughs> We can, we, can, we can anticipate and we can regret. We have an ability to worry the, about the future and regret the past, and animals don't do that. And the fact that we worry about the future and regret the past puts us in this sympathetic overdrive chronically, but it's, here's the problem, it's low-level sympathetic overdrive. It's chronic drip, 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 rather than a big burst of sympathetic overdrive. If it was a big burst, we'd either get out of the situation or we would die. Either way, it would be when, over. When, but when I first started, I'd get seasick in my own body because my vascular system was pumping wow. and moving. Wow. But you, you know, you don't understand that those vessels are meant to move. And That's right. And, yeah. We're meant to so, move. We're meant to yeah. move. That's exactly right. The lymphatic system. Talking, Go ahead. When yesterday, when you were talking about the tendon strength and how important that is, it, that's one of the keys in Systema 2 is really the um, tendons. It's not the, the tendon strength. That's the connective the tissue. Yeah, because the muscles move by virtue of the connective tissue, the tendons and the ligaments. The muscles move via that, and they get bigger and stronger by movement. Dude, you're right on. I'm going to look this up. Well, thank, thank you so you. much for sharing I that, Bo. Enjoy your show. You keep up the preaching, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that, Bo. Take care, bro. Bye-bye. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you for that. Love our smart listeners. Love our smart listeners. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or the Longevity products or our Bone Broth Protein at brightsidehealth.com, you can give us a call. 844-236-6010. Of course, if you have a success story or you just want to comment on anything we're talking about, 844-236-6010 is our number. From the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, short-chain fatty acids and ketones dire uh, directly regulate the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is your stress nervous system, your emergency nervous system, your fight-or-flight nervous system. When we're in sympathetic overdrive, pretty much all chronic degenerative diseases can ensue, especially if it's long-term and chronic, I should say. Long-term chronic sympathetic overdrive is behind, lurking behind all our chronic degenerative diseases. The sympathetic nervous system is our fear nervous system, so that means that fear, this is important you guys, fear is behind all of our chronic degenerative diseases, not in some airy fairy hippie talk, Boulder, Colorado way, but in a biochemistry way. The sympathetic nervous system, or activated sympathetic nervous system, when it's chronic and long term, shuts down healing, increases aging, reduces immunity, makes us susceptible to diseases. And anything you could do to get the sympathetic nervous system to stand down is going to be in your long-term health interest. Oh, so what do we have here? Short-chain fatty acids and ketones control the sympathetic nervous system. Get on the ketogenic diet. It calms the body down. Short-chain fatty acids are a little different from medium-chain fatty acids, the MCTs that we were talking about in the last segment. The MCTs come from coconut oil. 
or palm oil, and there's some in butter, there's some in, sa uh, in a lot of satur in saturated fats. Cheese has some MCTs. But the short chain fatty acids, those are a little different. Remember, fats come in three sizes, short, medium, and large. The short ones, now those are, those are amazing uh, themselves. The short ones are volatile. Yes, a volatile fat, uh, they evaporate. They're fat that evaporates. Without heat, it will just evaporate. That's why you can use vinegar on your counters to clean your counters. Because vinegar is a fatty acid, a short chain fatty acid. And these short chain fatty acids that are volatile are water soluble, a water soluble fat. Now we always say that fats are distinct from water and water chemistry is distinct from fat chemistry, but the short chain fatty acids are kind of violation there. They're a bridge between water and oil. They are both. They have the characteristics of water and the characteristics of oil. You could think of them as the essence of a fatty acid. They're super powerful. And the best way to get them quickly is with apple cider vinegar. If you ever read about al apple cider vinegar and all the benefits associated with apple cider vinegar, you're going to think it's like quackery. And a lot of people do think it's quackery. No, it's not quackery. Apple cider vinegar, in addition to being a great source of electrolytes, is largely made up, or has a, I don't know if it's largely made up, but it has a high concentration, probably 5 or 10%, something like that, of short chain fatty acids called a uh, short chain fatty acid called acetic acid or acetate and acetate's got incredible health benefits you're drinking an acetate solution you're drinking a short chain fatty acid solution when you drink apple cider vinegar swig on it after meals or with meals and swig on it between the between meals it'll help numerous aspects of biochemistry especially blood sugar chemistry and it can help calm down the body, too, according to this article from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Samantha. What's going on? Samantha. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, my son started out last week with what I thought was maybe canker sores. Um, okay. About Tuesday night, he started complaining of pain in his mouth. And then Wednesday, the sores started to appear. How old is he? Uh, How old is your son? He's 11. Okay. All right. Uh, and that's since the... then... I'm sorry? Go ahead. Since then, the sores have um, seemed to spread. They're getting worse. They're on the back of his throat. They're under Okay. That's not good. That's not good. No. All right, so we got, um, well, here's what you want to do. First of all, it's rare that that will just happen independent of other, other symptoms. Something else, okay. food is the first thing I would think about, uh, the digestive system, because this is, uh, when, uh, canker sores are a manifestation of an immune problem, a defensive system, immune system problem. It can also be caused by nutritional deficiencies. I'll get into that in a second. But the first thing you want to think about is something is suppressing the immune system or something is causing microscopic inflammation in the mouth. Now, why the mouth? Well, the cells of the mouth are very fast moving. They're constantly turning over. So it's a quick indicator. It's a canary in the coal mine for nutritional deficiencies and Im immune problems. Does that make sense? It's like the yeah. first place they'll show up. So does he have, and I always think digestion when I think of immune problems and inflammatory problems. Also, digestion could be involved in nutritional deficiencies if he's not absorbing nutrients. So any digestive issues, constipation, bowel movement issues, gas, bloating, uh, does he have a history that way? Was he breastfed? Anything along those lines? Gluten intolerant, egg intolerant, um, dairy intolerant? Not, not, not that you know that of. I know of, yeah. Okay, but you haven't um, looked, but you probably haven't looked, right? Right. Exactly. Okay, start looking. If he's 11, okay. he can tell you about his belly aches or his gas. And if it's, if it, keep in mind, if he's had it his whole 11-year life, he may not notice, any, not notice anything. He may think that's normal. He may be like, I don't have any uh -huh. bowel movement problems. I don't have any gas. But he, you know what I'm saying? So you've got to be very, very vigilant here. Get him on all the okay. nutritional supplements for the digestive system, including the nightly essence, yeah. probiotics. Get him, uh, uh, I'd be using apple cider vinegar after meals. You might okay. want to you might want to get him on some ultimate enzymes, but maybe it wouldn't hurt to get him on the ultimate enzymes. Just see what happens, and then you okay. want to start boosting the immune system with nutrients. I'd be using 200 micrograms of selenium, which is amazing for cold sores, which he doesn't have, but similar cold, cold sores being more viral. Canker now it's not a it, canker sores are a sign that the cells are not dividing in a healthy fashion. Cold sores are a little different. So, but either way, selenium can be helpful. Uh, beyond tangy tangy have him sipping on that. Have him do 200 international units a day of vitamin E. 
go to the health food store and get that. And then also, uh, how much does he weigh? Um, probably about 70 pounds. Okay. Have him get on, um, if you can do, find a 25 milligram capsule of zinc picolinate, have him do that. And uh, just have him sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Maybe throw in the Ultimate Daily and then also the Ultimate EFAs. Have him do three Ultimate EFAs a day. And then if you can, you want to do one more thing, get him on the Z-Radic, or the, I'm sorry, the Fucoid Z and have him do one or two capsules a day. Focus on digestion, focus on foods, and get him on a good nutritional supplement program, especially the, the extra ones that we just talked about here. And then really, I'd really encourage you to look for other symptoms because, as I say, it's very rare that a symptom will appear in and of itself without other symptomology that's going under the radar and the first place it becomes visible the first the first place invisible symptomology becomes visible is on the skin and in the mouth because those cells are dividing very very rapidly so you may be looking at an, uh, the beginnings of long uh, a chronic condition and now is when you want to get to the bottom of it okay. make sense did he what breastfeed about, uh, did he lice? breastfeed a lot this um, isn't a call and i'm well go ahead i'll tell you about lysine in a second Okay. Um, he, not for very long. Okay. Then it could easily have something to do with the digestive system and the immune system. Lysine is very interesting stuff. It's used to treat cold sores, not canker sores. Now, I don't, the word canker sore is sort of, uh, I assume you, you're not talking about a, a viral kind of thing. Is it like blistery in weird shapes or it is it is, broken skin? It has it's blistered. Um, it's okay. Blistered then, okay. Yeah, that could be cold sores. Then that's a more serious situation. That's an immune system problem. Definitely something is burdening his immune system. The same nutrients I just told you about. You might want to get him some extra vitamin C. Uh, but something is putting a burden on his immune system. And if it's spreading like that, it's a significant burden, which means there's something significant happening to him. It's not subtle. So you should be able to spot this. I would be looking at foods and sugar especially. And I'd be looking uh, at the nutritional deficiency component. Foods and sugar, though, I, I mean, for it to be spreading like that at the age of 11, uh, that's mm -hmm. telling me there's something significant going on in his digestive system I, uh, and slash food, digestion slash food. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. And were you gonna, anything else you want to say? Were you going to ask me something? Uh, I just, is there anything that I can do to help him with the pain, like, right oh. now? Yeah, you can get him some, you have to go get him some lidocaine. The only thing you do for, and that guy has to be miserable. Absolutely miserable, that poor kid. Have him suck on zinc lozenges, and that, that can help speed up healing. And then, if worse comes to worse, get a prescription for oral lidocaine. L-I-D-O-C-I-N-E. It's a topical anesthetic. And while I'm not a big guy, in a believer in drugs, I'm, I'm a less of a believer in pain. Especially mouth pain, right. especially for a little kid. So yeah, lidocaine okay. gel or uh, zinc lozenges, okay? Have him gargling with some vitamin C or have him gargle with a Beyond Tang Tangerine. Okay, that might help as well throughout the day. And maybe gargling with salt water also. Salt water, okay? yeah, I have him doing that right now too. Okay. All right, I got to go. That's the end of the show. Thank you so much for your call. Hope we helped you out. Samantha in Nevada. And thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. And uh, that's it. Have yourselves an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.